Good morning, everyone. This is one pretty Ricky. You are tuning in on KRFF ninety five point nine LPFM. Uh, this is F five Recovery Radio. Super happy that we're here. We made it another Wednesday. It is June fourteenth. Uh, awesome, middle of the month, almost practically middle of the year. It's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so I'm joined with co-host Adam Martin. Uh, our other co-host Kirsten uh, was is out. I think she's in Washington D.C. Uh, kind of not like chaperoning some kids, doing some amazing stuff. So shout out to her. So sorry she wasn't able to make it today. So it's just uh, it's just a boys' night or day. So boy, should I? Night? Boys' night. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah, so it's just uh always fun to be able to do this show and I think this is like man, we're just amazing how just so much support that we've been having. So thank you all so so much. Um uh, kind of plug this from, not even shameless. I'm just super happy that everyone has continued to like support our show and continue to love this and love recovery and all the other things that we're able to give each and every week. But uh before we officially jump in, I did want to mention that I completely spaced that they are doing some uh, roof construction on uh, on KRFF building this morning. So if you hear some things, you know, just go with it. Like, hopefully I'll be able to edit this all out later for the podcast, and I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out. But so if you just hear us, you know, kind of talking really, really loud, that's just because we're trying to talk over the construction upstairs. But it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I mean, that's the beautiful thing of F5 Recovery Radio. We just make things work. That's what we do. So it's going to be good. It's going to be great. I'm going to make it all do all the I'm things. Almost, yeah. <laughs> Adam's again. <laughs> it's what I feel like people who've like been tuning in regularly, like they can tell like when we're stalling. But that's not what this is. This is just connection. <laughs> this is just really being able to spend that time. Um, also, just so, some more announcements before we officially jump in. Uh, we have some, our shirts came in. So shout out shirts from Fargo. Our ODAT girl and ODAT guy shirts have came in and they are so amazing. We're not wearing them today uh, because I want to save them for when uh, Kirsten is here. But it's going to be so, so good. Um, they turned out awesome. So shout out shirts from Fargo for doing that. Shout out Adam for <laughs> just coming up with that amazing. I, did you come up with it? Was that phrase yours? Like ODAT girl or ODAT? I did like, not come up with it. Well, I know. I mean, it's been in the. I've never heard it. That's because you're in a different <laughs> recovery. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys say in gamblers? They're not like one table at a time. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, be, be stay tuned for version two of the of the shirts. One table at a time. One card at a time. Uh, one, one breath at a time. So, uh, on yeah. my on my. Uh, there's yeah. a link to subscribe so if you subscribe we can get you a shirt so, so please do and um, i think there's one maybe on the f5 one too i'm not sure i don't know if not i yeah. think they can i think there's a subscribe button it should be somewhere i know it's that's the hard part because we're on the show but i don't know what it shows for other people but please make sure you subscribe or if you're interested please put in the comments let us know like hey i would like to subscribe need some more info I will definitely find the link, get it to you so you can subscribe and get one of the sweet shirts. We They come in, um, we have them in male and female, oh, that guy, oh, that girl. So yeah. we'll tell us. We'll post a video of why we're doing the oh, that guy or oh, that girl. But we were doing recovery like slogans or mm-hmm. one-liners. I don't know what you yeah. call them. Recovery slogans. Yeah. And and Kirsten had never heard of ODAT. She had heard of One Day at a Time. Right. And then she, as we were talking about it, she was like, oh, I thought you meant like, oh, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there are people out there that talk like that. So it just, it's, I mean, it's not far-fetched. So. <laughs> True. Oh, yeah. But that was, yeah. So they're great shirts and they have our, our information on the back. So please, please, if you're interested, we would love, love, love to gift you one. Just let us know in the comments or send us a DM, however you need to do it. Yeah. At the minimum, just leave a comment that you want to subscribe and then we'll, we'll put a link in there for yeah, you. But if sure you can't you find it. it. So yeah, help support this radio mm-hmm. program. Program. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What we talk? What did you? Yeah. If you sent a text out this week about what we were talking about, yep. I totally missed it. <laughs> That's so. fine. <laughs> well, we're talking about future planning. Future planning. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, if someone the, leaves a comment. 
today about Scott having his own <laughs> damn podcast. Like, I don't even know if I can say <laughs> that word on the radio, but <clears throat> if if I hear Scotty's Corner one more time, <laughs> I'm gonna lose it. Scotty's Corner. Or Scott. Is, wow, yeah, that's it. That's, That's what, what he wants to call it. He's like, we should do a podcast together. I was oh, like, boy. oh, okay. He's like, we'll call it Scotty's Corner. I was like, why am I doing it? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> We're just gonna make it all about Scotty all the time. I feel like if, like, we can't. We went on a podcast, or we were checking out podcasts when we were on a trip, mm-hmm. and there was a podcast dedicated to dad jokes, where really? all they did was just dad jokes the whole time, and just uh, back and forth. Ba- no, just it was like a robot voice. <laughs> It was like AI, or maybe not. Well, maybe I guess yeah. it's possible for AI mm-hmm. to like search the internet and find dad jokes, dad jokes and then and just then do just say it. You up. know, uh, but yeah. And as we're listening to it, Scott's like, "I'm better." Oh my god! <laughs> of like, course he did. I was like, "Scott, it's a robot." <laughs> <laughs> not much. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. How long was the? How long was each episode? Was it like just like an hour of just straight? No, dad it was just like, um, just like unlimited, like oh, so four minute to... episodes. Yeah, of just hey, here's hundreds and hundreds. Yeah, yeah. Somebody put some time in. They got a ton of subscribers and so just stuff too. And they and there's a lot. There's like a lot of commercials. So hmm. whatever they did, they they got to be making some money. Yeah, you know. And there's like no personality. It's just a. It's literally a robot voice. I'm gonna have to find this. This yeah. just sounds ridiculous. Yeah, I came across it when we were. I was just kind of searching dad jokes so I could be ready for Scott. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I came across this video of survivors of dad jokes, and it's just all these kids that were like, do the dad joke, uh-huh. but they do it in a depressing way. Where like I'm still alive, thank God, but <laughs> it, it's not. Oh, so, I think I saw one on TikTok. It was kind of like a. It was like a. Like you know, kind of like our anonymous groups, like just everybody in a circle, just talking yeah. about their like dad jokes. It was you know what my favorite anonymous, uh, funny uh, humor is? Mm-hmm. Is helium anonymous? <laughs> and everyone's going around the room. He's like, I've been clean for, you know, ten months. I've been clean for five years. And then this guy, it gets to this guy. And he's like, I've been clean for six <laughs> months. <laughs> and everyone looks at him, and they know that he's just like hit the helium. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest video I've ever seen. <laughs> oh my god! When I I literally almost peed myself because it was it's. I mean, there's tons of people that you know. Obviously, we struggle with recovery. Relapse happens and stuff, right. you know. But if we could look at it like how we're looking at a guy who just relapsed on helium and went to a meeting, right? Instead of just just like, you know demoralized Mm -hmm. stigma based you know whatever uh i think we probably have a lot more reception to people like continuously coming right to the meetings and then or wherever and and eventually not having to relapse on helium (laughs) you know what i mean right Um, yeah funny the other the most other funny video i ever saw was when vine was still a thing oh man i miss dude when vine came out so vine what was the other one? It was the live feed one, per, uh, Periscope. Uh, per- Periscope. Yeah, yep. and mm-hmm. then there was that other one with like the like Rugrat or uh, Muskrat or something. I don't remember what the mm-hmm. other one. It was like yellow. <clears throat> but anyways, Vine came out, and I was just like, "This is amazing." Mm-hmm. It's like totally feeds my ADHD. <laughs> That's quick. Like thirty second videos, five second videos. So anyways, this guy's eating at Denny's, and he's like in the the cameras like you know going around him mm-hmm. and and it all all of a sudden the uh asian voice was like i'm so lonely oh no and i dude i i did not expect it and i, I laughed so hard i saved that video i was like and i can't find it anywhere but i'll find it but i'll oh. And I wish we had like a a thing where we could like show videos or show what we're talking about, kind of mm-hmm. like uh, what's that? Cue up a clip. And yeah, what's that? It. Uh, that video or that or the show with, where they show all the videos on MTV or whatever. Ridiculousness. Ridiculousness. Yes, dude, that show. As much as like the girl in the middle kind of annoys <laughs> me with her laugh. She's on the West Coast. And Rob Dietrich is that his name? Mm-hmm. Is kind of just a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. I just, it was kind of like Tosh 2.0. Right. Oh, I love Tosh. Man, just the commentary with uh-huh. videos. 
There's another one on TikTok right now that the guy who's like a fake announcer, mm. Bob, whatever his name is, yeah. and he like announces with like a bunch of cuss words and <laughs> and and it's always like something has nothing to do with sports or sometimes it does and he's just like it's just he, funny hearing like professional voice all of a sudden drop f bombs right. <laughs> Um, and then my most recent go-to is these two Australian guys who mouth the words of announcers, mm-hmm. but then they act it out in their own way. So like in soccer, if yeah. something like crazy happens, they'll they'll act out like what they think the announcers look like, which yeah. is probably, you know, not, I'll send it to <laughs> like, you. Yeah, these yeah. two guys are just like taking it by storm and mm-hmm. they're not doing any. The only original content is they're just responding to what announcers would look like right. in their in their head or whatever. Yeah. So like one video came where the baseball game is like scanning, you know, the crowd and mm-hmm. all of a sudden they see this guy like reach over and grab this girl's boob and and all the, all, you hear the announcer like go, "Oh." And, <laughs> and then they show the two guys just like like trying to hold it in, you know, the laughter and so then they cut back to the and right when they pitch you know they're supposed to say what's happening, and the announcer starts saying, "You know, and here, and then they lose it." And they're, just like, ah. <laughs> they're like, "Yep, there's no way to be professional." In yeah, this. there's yeah. no way. No, <laughs> nobody could be professional in that moment. Yeah. So, anyways, that's my little rant on on videos. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we did more funny videos like that, but mm-hmm. I just not, I don't have that s- skill set or that. Yeah. You know. Well, we used to. Just yeah. like silly stuff. Remember, like even like Scott's dad's jokes, like on Facebook, they never were, like took off, but like people loved it. Just Do I remember Scott's dad's? Jo- no, 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 I don't no. remember them. But remember, ever. like we would, <laughs> we would like make Scott like just random pictures of Scott and make it a meme and then post a dad joke. Yeah, there. we'll have to start doing that again. <laughs> don't sound so disappointed. Such a. <laughs> it's here's the thing. Here's my thing with dad jokes. Uh-huh. They, I think they're funny. Yes. Do I think someone should get popularity by like <laughs> doing them? I, okay. Mm-hmm. If I did that with any other thing, like it's plagiarism. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's just like, like if I went on, if I was like, I'm going to do comedy and then I just went in, uh, in what's that guy's name? Uh, Carlos Mencia <laughs> and just started using everybody's jokes mm-hmm. or whatever. Joe Rogan's going to show up. Right. You know what I mean? Because right. it's not. And so. I get it. They're kind of open ended, mm-hmm. They're like open source, you know, <laughs> jokes, and anyone can use them. But right. da- S- Scott needs to come up with his own dad jokes. That's true. I mean, he has books and like all sorts of stuff, and he Googles yeah. and yeah. But then people feed him material. But then yeah. it's like it's funnier when he says it. Yeah, it is funnier when he says it. He does mm-hmm. has that. He has that delivery. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's ridiculous. Shout out Scott College and his dad jokes. Yeah, I hope he's watching. I text him. I was going to invite him on yeah. if he if he showed up. So Scott, if you're listening, just comment and then yeah, I, I think if we see your comment, we can we mm-hmm. can invite you on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. for two minutes. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's like the middle of the year, so I figured it'd be a perfect time to like talk about like what do we have coming in the rest of the year. We have coming the rest of the, you know, take it out as far out as we want to go. Well, but so much is happening. So much has already happened, but yeah, you know, you know I I just kind of get this feel that it's it's, you know, COVID really took a number mm-hmm. on our. Uh, I mean, everything: economy, people, yep. mental health, suicide, domestic violence, like everything. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything the same yep. as it was prior. I mean, there's got to be a little bit of. I mean, I'm sure there's things that are the same, but um everything was just different and so for like years Mm -hmm. i think people were just like apprehensive to do anything and then i feel like this summer everyone just went full charge everybody's doing stuff like you know the only the only people who the only place that i'm seeing the most struggle is restaurants but here's the thing like there's a lot of there's a lot of conversation about restaurants right now about how people aren't showing up to work or they can't pay people enough or whatever. And so here's the thing. If that was true, 100%, if everything that everybody's saying about restaurants and the economy with restaurants and stuff like that was true, then no new restaurants would be starting up. Okay? The restaurants that are closing down that I've noticed are either ones that have been around with like kind of crappy customer service for a long time even before the narrative came out about you know the economy and 
and minimum wage and all that stuff. Uh, uh, or they there there's another aspect of the team that's not producing. Okay. Some of these places that are closing down, I never even heard of. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like Taco John's. Well, I mean, I heard no, of Taco John's. <laughs> you know, Taco Taco Tuesday. Yeah. You know, but that the uh, but you have to do like a comparative analysis between the Taco John's in Fargo, right, and the Taco John's in Minneapolis. So if they're like if they're like in where they're at in the location, there's just it seems like you know some of these you know places that are closing down, they just don't have a great marketing plan. They right. don't have great leadership. They don't have. Maybe they don't pay their people and like whatever. Sure. But then why are all these other places like popping off? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So. But, but I think, um, well, I think a lot of that comes from just the, you know, the as you mentioned, just the culture that's kind of being built and the culture that's like, what is it like coming back? Mm-hmm. Like, I think one of the, the biggest things that we did at F5 that kept me at F5 post COVID was kind of like, okay, we're going to like, we still need to be in service. We still need to like help people but do it at your own pace. Mm-hmm. It was, wasn't was like a, you have to come back. Or you, you know, you see all these different news reports where people are getting like forced to come back into the office and do all these things. But it was like, for us, it was just like, okay, you know, like as you're comfortable, yeah. let's slowly make it work and, you know, wear a mask if you're sick, you know, get your test, do all the different things. But I don't know in a service industry like that because, you know, if you don't show up, there's not that person there. Mm-hmm. If they're able to do that, to be able to have the, you know, come back at your own pace, type approach but i'm sure to your point like the only reason why some of these places are able to pop up because people are like you know i want to i need something better because if you if you're just in the same terrible situation you know it may not be a terrible restaurant but if you're getting treated like garbage but Mm -hmm. you don't know anything different Mm -hmm. so then you get this like laid off every like everything closes now it's like okay and you rethink your life and rethink how you want to do things and then you go back to the same place and it's like oh they're still doing the same thing yeah. they're not being any different yeah why should i continue i mean when's to do the last this? time you went to taco john's and and we're like this is amazing right ever no it was yeah. a it was a maintenance fix right right like i'm hungry right now there's nobody in the line there right <laughs> i'm gonna go get something to eat <laughs> mm-hmm. right and then i'm gonna be on the toilet for like three <laughs> hours but uh or the most common thing I think that was ordered there was the six pack and a pound. Oh yeah, everybody great. knew about it, mm-hmm. right? You get six tacos and a pound of Olays. Yep. You know, and so what else do they have? Right. I don't, I don't know. know. Right. I mean, I know quite a few things that Taco Bell has. They're not shutting down. Right. You know, and they've pivoted and they open still t- t- two a.m. Mm-hmm. Right. Or they've created. You know, there's just a bunch of different avenues of like the hustle. Right. That Taco Bell does compared to like Taco John's, and it's the same thing with like you know, bring it back to recovery, mm-hmm. right? There's people who put in the work and there's people that don't, right? right? Uh, does it mean that, that Taco John's is is uh, crappy? No. Right. It just means that they just didn't put it, they didn't, mm-hmm. they didn't pivot, right. right? And so you're probably going to see a lot more restaurants still from the effects of COVID, mm-hmm. you know, because a lot of places opened. Right. And it's created, you know, you know, back in the day in Moorhead when I was growing up, the only places I remember is Taco Bell, Taco John's, and Dairy Queen. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, there was so other many... places, Burger King, you know, yeah. but it was all the main ones. Not anymore. Yeah. There's little places that are There's independent. so many. And, yeah. yeah. That are popping up everywhere. Uh-huh. And so you either have to pivot with the times. Right. Uh, and I think this is part of the problem with franchises. hmm Right? Because what's, like, popular in California right. is not the same as North Dakota. Right. And so I think chapters are probably a better play for restaurants mm-hmm. than there is uh, for franchises, right. you know, because, you know, McDonald's kind of set that tone or, mm-hmm. of making everything the same. Right. The continuity. Yeah, it should like, be the oh. same here as you go here. Right. Right. And I was like, well, that's fine. But I guarantee you that the food when I lived in Alabama compared to the food that I eat here mm-hmm. are vastly different. Right. Why would we have the same two restaurants? Right. Or at least the same menu. Mm hmm. But I think even to like to your point of just recovery, like going, there's no. Yeah, I kind of went into recovery and then I got backed out again. (laughs) I was like to bring it back into recovery. What are you talking about? Two different (laughs) pathways now? But like even like there's no, there's no, there's no AA meeting that's still the same on purpose. 
right? Like there's different ones that are, are meant to be different. Even if you went to a big book study, like one group's big book study isn't going to follow, isn't going to be the same as another big book study. It, it's mm -hmm. still doing the same content. Yeah. It's still using the same book and still the same principles, but the people that are running it and organizing it and the people that show up to that and continue to show up to that mm -hmm. are still different from yeah. another group. Mm -hmm. But I think, and sometimes I think in the beginning, when I was all about the con <laughs> convenience of recovery and like I wanted to quick and wanted like things to just happen really, really fast. I was frustrated that I my, my Monday at noon meeting was different from my Friday at noon meeting, mm -hmm. even though it was still, you know, at the same place. And, you know, some of the people from Monday were also there at Friday. It was still a different feel. The vibe was different. Like everything was. And then I was like, oh, this is kind of frustrating because I mix. I want my Monday to be my Friday. Oh. Yeah. But then that's that's not how it works. And and I and it was good that it didn't work, because if every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday were all like Monday, maybe somebody went to a Monday meeting, hated it and be like, then go to another day and then be like, oh, man, this is just like Monday. I hate this, too. And then never get in recovery. Yeah. And never mm -hmm. be able to, like, stick with it and, and stay committed to it. So I don't know. I think it's or, you know, you could have been like a libertarian and started another one like it. True. I think that's like the beautiful thing with like, you know, those programs or mm -hmm. even in businesses or whatever, where they instead of like, I mean, what, what's the purpose of like, I mean, do, does do employees find real purpose in working at a place that's the same everywhere? Mm -hmm. You know, like that's kind of federal, right? You you know, but these these smaller places that are kind of, you know, city wide mm -hmm. right but they may be popping up in different ones or whatever it's a different vibe every time you go to a different one right. um uh they just there's a lot more like ownership mm -hmm. you know so like when you have you know your go-to meetings here you could probably you know go to another state look for two meetings that are like that and you could probably find something really close yeah. but even the vibe will be different mm -hmm. you know right. because it's more customed to the people that are in that area. Right. You know, this is why I see, I see a lot of people who leave programs after they move because they'll say, you'll hear them say a lot, a lot of times like, mm -hmm. well, it wasn't like this back home. Mm. Right. Okay. And they just kind of just don't feel like they fit in. They don't right. whatever because it's been real like, a, unless they have a person there who, who has experience in that or, right. or, or understands the, the, the idea of like going from community to community mm -hmm. and so how hard that can be. Right. Um, but I've seen so many people move here and then stop going, you know, to meetings or programs or whatever, really? because it wasn't like it was at home. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, so for people who are making that move or, or like hear that and be like, Oh my God, if I'm going to go somewhere different and it's different, how do you like, how do you prep for that? Other than knowing, like, it's not going to it's be like It's another oh. form of reentry, yep. right? Like, it's uh, like veterans, right, coming mm -hmm. back and then getting reintegrated into society. It's yep. very difficult, especially with the type of work that you had to do before you came there, right? Or right. some of the things you saw or PTSD or whatever. And so it's, 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 you know, it's not the community's responsibility to make people feel like they fit in. Mm. Right. Yep. I think it's like our responsibility as community members at five Ridge, whatever, mm -hmm. to do our best to like include people. Sure. But even including people doesn't make them feel like they're included. Right. Mm. And so, you know, for, you know, for the people that I've seen that have been successful with it, mm -hmm. they go into a new community, a new program, whatever, with an open mind that is not going to be the same. Hmm. And I need to adjust to the community. Right. I can't change the community for me. me. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, in the part of the big book where it says, create the fellowship you crave, right? Mm -hmm. You can create a community. Yep. It's going to be impossible to change one. Right. Right. In that respect, mm -hmm. it's completely possible to change a community by, you know, changing the way, like making sure we shake everyone's hands, making sure everyone has food, right. making sure, you know, yep. but, uh, but you still can't make them feel like they're included. Right. And so, and c if community is the solution to addiction, when you move communities, it's just as important then mm -hmm. as it was when you first got sober. Right. So <clears throat> it all comes down to how you respond. Right. 
And that's difficult to do because, like, thinking of it from a from a personal perspective, it's like okay, knowing that this I, it needs to be me. I need to make this change. I need to to do a lot of that. But then it's like, well, that's it's shifting who I am yep. as a person. Maybe I'm really self centered. Maybe I'm Kanye, right? Like, mm-hmm. maybe I'm like I've been doing this this one way, and I think this one thing for so so long, and then now to have to just slightly pivot just blows my whole world up. It's like, oh my god, this is yep. so just ridiculous i have to do something right different yeah like yeah. you're supposed to help me not you know the other way around yeah trying to deprogram <laughs> yeah like Man. when it's not in the i mean it's like super easy to like oh scott too sorry is he well i don't know if i can can you bring him in well, they definitely won't see him on mine so we're gonna try and get scott in so if you're watching on mine or whatever, just go to the F5 Project's uh, um, live feed. Okay. Let me see if he said I'm going to ask him if he can join. Okay. But while we're doing <clears throat> that, you were saying. Yeah, we're going to see if we can get uh, Scott on. So if you guys are watching. Oh. Um, what was I saying? about community well we're just talking about like just that how difficult it is as an individual to think differently to be different oh yeah so like it's easy when you're in the in the hot pan right Mm -hmm. uh you destroyed your life (laughs) you know you're get in prison you're you're sober the next day you know in detox whatever right like it's super easy to like start that process to deprogram Mm -hmm. right and start programming uh recovery or sobriety whatever but when things are good and you, maybe you're moving because you got a new job or whatever or, mm. you know, uh, you were really involved in this home group and now you're going to be. Another aspect of this is that people who had been sober for a long period of time mm-hmm. and then they relapse mm. and then they try to come back. Yep. Right. And so, like, even in, in these kind of micro cultures or whatever of like recovery, and you know, there's still like a, a form of like hierarchy that happens mentally right yeah. like with sobriety dates or people who have uh you know jobs at the home group or people who've been at the home group for a long time you know mm. they start to establish like reliability you know kind of a hierarchy that's the guy who sponsors everybody that's the guy who helps with the events that's the guy who makes the coffee right. that's the gal that sets up the chairs right yep. and then once you you know you've been there for a while you start to get, like become a somebody in your group well that person relapses and they come back and just by default, they they lose their spot. Right, because somebody right? has to take their role. People will switch sponsors. People will, you know, you can't be the secretary if you're not five years sober, whatever. Like, right. there's a bunch of things that could happen. And so I've yet to see somebody who's had more than 10 years sober. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen it with seven. I've seen it with five, you know, lower okay. numbers. But I've not seen yet anyone who is at least 10 years sober relapse. Mm-hmm came back and stay. Hmm. Stay in recovery or stay in that stay group? Stay in recover all of it. Oof. Yeah. Okay. There's something that happens mentally. Mm-hmm. Like where it's one thing to feel like a, like probably mentally a failure out in the community. Yep. I don't know half the people that are judging me, so it doesn't really bother me. Right. Right. Uh, but in your home group. Mm-hmm. You know everyone. You know those people. And right. you can see the little bits of change in in how people talk to you. Right. Right? They're a little more apprehensive. You know, mm-hmm. we you know, uh uh they you don't get asked to do as much stuff, right? right. You don't get to you it seems like you, you've lost responsibility. Mm-hmm. You know, your purpose kinda loses out because you just you're just you're not ten years sober anymore. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And before you had like purpose because it was coincided with your sobriety date, right. the work that you've done. Mm-hmm. You know, I've taken a bunch of people through the big book. And now that conversation turns into, you know, I used to be 10 years sober. I'm I'm new again. Uh, you know, when I was 10 years sober, right. this is how we did it. So that's why I mean like it's mm. all the same yep. that the identity becomes more important than recovery. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Because if recovery was by far the most important aspect of it, all of none of those things would matter. Sure. Ever. Right. 
And so like all those years I was slipping in and out, slipping in and out. Mm -hmm. Finally, I came to the conclusion that it just doesn't matter. Right. My sobriety date doesn't matter. The home group name doesn't matter. It Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if I say I'm sober or if I'm clean Mm -hmm. or any of those things. These, those are all micro community, you know, uh, identification kind of stuff. Important, Mm -hmm. but not as important as like how I view myself now that after I've relapsed. Right. How am I going to keep, like, my goal should be, how am I going to continue to come and disregard the programming that I've had mm-hmm. or built that I didn't even know I had until I relapsed? Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. You can get super philosophical about this. <laughs> For sure. I see it happen in churches. I mm-hmm. see it happen in schools. I yep. see it happen, you know, as long as people are accepted, you know, uh, uh, or as long as people convert to that microculture, people sure. are usually accepted. Yeah. And then once that something happens Mm -hmm. in that and it shifts, the the change starts to happen. And so hopefully they learn or we learn from it and move forward. But usually Mm -hmm. that's probably the beginning of when the last time you're going to see them. Right. Yeah. (laughs) It's kind of like that old uh, (laughs) picture where it was like – you know, nobody, ah, I don't remember how it went, but no, uh, remember that last time you played football with all the other kids in the neighborhood? Yep. You didn't know that was the last time. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's how, like, it's just like people in recovery. Right. You never know if that's the last time you're going to see somebody. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> Well, if you're uh, tuning in, this is the F5 Recovery Radio here on KRFF 95.9 LPFM. Uh, so we want to thank all of the listeners, but we also want to just uh, to send a plea and kind of just uh, uh, pledge out to all our business owners, managers, nonprofit organizations. If you are interested in considering advertising, why not learn what underwriting is on a nonprofit community radio station like Radio Free Fargo? If you want to learn more about what underwriting is, please contact us at our website, www.radiofreefargo.org, or you can check them out on Facebook. Uh, Let the listeners know you support the community by supporting this amazing radio station, 95.9 LPFM. So thank you again, all of everyone for just listening here on the radio and also our Facebook Live listeners as well. Uh, This is the F5 Recovery Radio. I'm one pretty Ricky and our co-host, Adam Martin. Uh, We're talking about future planning and, of course, as it says in the name, just future planning and recovery. So uh, one of the... uh, you know, one of the kind of just the attributes of I want to kind of use for the second half of the show is recognizing we were just kind of sharing about just this microcosm of just change and just, you know, really understanding just things are different and new and having to, you know, abide by that. I think one of the things that really help that helped me in future planning, because that, you know, my the expectation, which I, I appreciate, like is one day at a time, it's never you know, what is it going to look like in a year from now, a year clean, five years clean, 10 years clean, 15 years clean, because you know, you may not get there. You may, you may get 15 years clean one year at a time, you know, might happen a year, relapse a year, relapse, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. it's a couple of years and relapse. You may not ever actually see a five or 10 or 15. Mm -hmm. Right. But what are some of the things that I think knowing that we have to be focused so much on today how can we use the focus on today to make sure, hopefully, that we can see a lot more time? Like, how do we plan without, at the same time, living one day at a time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I heard a motto one time where it was like, um, tell God your, if you want to hear God laugh, tell God your plans. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. You know, and then you hear, you know, people get really legalistic about one day at a time. They're just, you know, if you get... Yeah. You know, just focus on today. Be where your hands are at, you know, you know, grow where you're planted, you know, kind of stuff, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll tell you 100 percent, 10 years later, I am in a completely different spot than I ever anticipated when I first got sober. Yep. I had none of this was on the register, right? Yep. None of have a podcast, a radio show, F5, The Ridge. Right. Like all of it. None of this was even I never even thought about being a business owner. Nothing. I just went to work. I got on my bike when I was living in Horace and I rode all the way to West Fargo to go to work. That was like I just wanted to get a car. Mm -hmm. 
you know. And so I think, <clears throat> you know, you know, some guys I meet, they're just like, God wants me to be an electrician. Or I'll hear other people say, God wants me to work at F5, right, whatever. And I'm like, that's cool. I don't know how you know that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, unless you're basing it off feelings or something like that. Sure. You know, like my relationship with God's pretty objective mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, even in the Bible, it didn't tell me that I was going to start F5. <laughs> You know right. what I mean? So f- that's for the, bir- you know, the Baptists out there, the, yeah, <laughs> the they're literalists of the, you know. Um, but I do think that there's things that I really enjoy doing, and I think that there's things that are, you know, faithful to him and that love my neighbor. And if I can combine all that into what I do today, then that's what I'm supposed to do, right? Uh, other than, work, you know, work at a place that I absolutely hate and, you know, and don't feel like just whatever. You can be in God's you know, uh, uh, um, vision there as you, as, as much as you can in a place that you love, right? right? It has nothing to do with the jobs. It has nothing to do. So when I started to realize that it doesn't really matter what, where I go as mm-hmm. much as it matters what my intent and what I do, sure, I can go anywhere, mm-hmm. right? So I think that's why it's like, you know, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans, right? But if you want to hear, uh, <clears throat> if you want to, if you want to be in his in his uh, you know path that he's laid out for you or whatever, the path isn't title and detail specific; it's yeah. action and love specific. Mm-hmm. So you can work on a manufacturing line and make your dedicate your life to the people around you as much as you can at F five into right. the community and staff. So it's you know so one day at a time. Have goals, right. right? But make the goals more specific to, you know, what you're doing rather than what the outcome is. Right. You know, be better than you were yesterday. Right. That's a good goal. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's kind of like, well, the probably the place that people have the hardest time with this is harm reduction. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And I think it's hilarious when people are <laughs> anti-harm reduction because I'm just like, you could go anywhere in their life right. and see where they've screwed up multiple times mm-hmm. and how they become successful later with it, or maybe they gave up on it or whatever. You know, the only reason it's it, harm reduction is like a big deal is because it's usually people who have no experience in it right. that are the ones that are talking trash about it. Right. But you make a compare. This is why Jesus always worked in parables Mm -hmm. because people would not understand what he was saying if he spoke literally Literally. about that situation, Mm -hmm. you know, to the Levites and the priests and stuff like that about loving their neighbor or whatever. If he would have just been like, it's what the law says and be like, well, you know, there's this part where it says (laughs) shall rather than, you know, and, but then he breaks it down and he's like, they walked across the road, Mm -hmm. right? Because they were staying within the law. Right or they found their loopholes or whatever. And then this guy who doesn't know anything about the law, right, right just falls down and he's like picks him up and then brings him and takes care of him and oils him up and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Get him back like, on his way. And, yeah. and pays for two days at the hotel and he's like, yeah, of the three, which one loved their neighbor? Right. And then the, what's the guy? He's like, I guess this guy. <laughs> Couldn't even refer to him, right? Couldn't even say his mm-hmm. name. Yeah, because I bet you if, if the answer would have been a Levite or priest, he would have said their name. Oh, for sure. You know? So that's what I'm saying is yeah. that even in that Good Samaritan story, and I'm getting really preachy right now, but even in the Good Samaritan story, the Levite and the priest knew what their job was. Right. They knew, And they were in God's path, right? Like they mm-hmm. were in, like they believed that they had that job because of God. Right. But even in that world, you can, you, you can, not be in his grace, mm-hmm. right? You yep. you could be living self-will in the actual job that God himself came down and was like, you're a pastor. Right. And then you could be the janitor of the church and be more powerful than that pastor mm-hmm. because you made it about the people. Right. I'm mopping here today because I'm saving lives. Mm-hmm. I'm answering phones because I'm saving lives. Right. I'm <clears throat> I'm sending out marketing materials because I'm saving lives. If it becomes more about saving lives, it doesn't matter where you work. So. Right. Well, I think th- and that's that's the hope. Like in in every every position, every anything, anything we decide to do, uh 
to be able to really like look at and to make sure that, okay, if I can continue to do this thing, go to my meetings, talk to my sponsor, go to work, be good. Like, cause it does. I mean, I think a lot of the times my focus was so much on recovery that I couldn't future plan because every time I was like trying to like, okay, what am I going to do tomorrow or next week or next Mm -hmm. month or Mm -hmm. whatever? It was like, it would just oh, I'd go back to the book. It's like, no, nope, it's one day at a time. It doesn't matter what I'm doing tomorrow. It doesn't matter what I'm doing next week or next month or whatever. And so then I would just push all those thoughts out and I would just focus on today, which w- was what I needed in the beginning. But then once I ne- was like, well, like, no, I need to start to think about what is my relationship with my wife going to look like mm-hmm. tomorrow? What is my, what is, if I don't go to work, you know, like, am I going to be able to pay my fines back? You know, if I don't, you know, I, I need I have a meeting with my PO next week. You know, like it was a lot of things that were still happening, although I wanted to just hole up and just be like, OK, I'm only going to do today's events and tasks. You know, it's not like the rest of the world is doing that. So then it was like, OK, well, how do I acclimate my staying focused on my recovery, treating it one day at a time, going to my meetings, and doing that while the world is still looking at tomorrow and mm-hmm. next week and the next month? And then it was like, OK, well, if I do entertain that if i do start to think about those things like okay well let me make sure that i'm gonna plan to go to my meeting on thursday and saturday or i'm gonna make sure that okay i have my po meeting on tuesday i need to tell my boss today that hey next tuesday i need to get off a little early because i need to go to this meeting but i can come back Mm -hmm. you know whatever the situation might Mm be and i think looking at it and then once i started doing that and realizing that Oh, this is okay. Cause I was just, I was just so afraid of like relapsing just because of how dangerous that, how dangerous I thought it was going to be for me. But then a lot of the experiences and people that I had in my life who had relapsed and had burned it down even more than what they did prior mm-hmm. to, to it. I was so afraid of it. So I was just like, no, I, I, can't, I, 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 you know, I was just like stuttering and I was like, I can't do this. And I just had no confidence in anything i was like i can't look at any of that because i was just so afraid of like if i do that it's all gonna go to heck <laughs> you know it's all gonna just everything is just gonna like i'm i'm not gonna be living in my my sponsor is gonna leave me i was just all these like negative things that i just thought were gonna happen if i planned things out mm-hmm. and then when i slowly started like okay well let me just plan tomorrow let mm-hmm. me just you know breadcrumb it a little bit let me just take a little bit a little bit more and more and more and now it's like okay now i'm i'm confident now i have five years but i don't care about the five years it's just i've just been doing it and practicing it long enough it just happens to be five years but i've been Mm -hmm. practicing being focused and knowing that okay i need to still focus on today but i need to also think about how do i make sure my son now Mm -hmm. like how do i plan for that how do i start to put put money away like Mm -hmm. i didn't care about any of that before because (laughs) everything everything that came in had to go straight out to paying all sorts of different people back so now that i don't oh it's like oh okay now i can oh cool i can i can keep some of this you sure Mm -hmm. like you know it's like oh this is nice like this is awesome having a savings account you know what i mean and all those like little things that start to happen but it still looks like okay i still never forget the fundamental of like as much I, I never push myself too far where i'm too future planning where i forget to take care of today but then i never stay so scared and focused on today that i don't think about what's going to happen tomorrow mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah well you know don't know what's going to happen yeah ever mm-hmm. i mean everything could change yep for i mean there's there's people that when i saw them on friday and then i heard about them on saturday you know, when they took their own life, had n- no idea mm-hmm. that they were even struggling with that. Right. And it, every the whole thing, cha- everything changed. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Business is shutting down. Like something's going to change, and that's why I've never been a big fan of like, you know, uh, you know, planning or set. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a plan. I plan too. I have mm-hmm. lists that I write down and execute. Yep. I have. Uh, um, you know, goals and stuff like sure. that. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not obsessed with them. I'm not in love with them because it could change any time, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? Like us starting this new curriculum in JRCC yep. was not even on the on a year ago. Right. wasn't even thought about. And then one day, this uh, um, network out in Alaska, this Native American uh, tribe, reached out and was like, "Hey, we want to have a conversation." And then it completely changed 
my job right. for a, a little while or whatever. Mm-hmm. And now we got new employees and stuff like that that never anticipated of ever working at F5. Mm-hmm. You know, like you just never know. Opportunities come and, and, and it may not be aligned with your goal. But maybe that goal wasn't meant to be. Right. You know, maybe, I mean, and this goes with everything. Uh, the struggles that I see with guys coming out of prison is they set these goals and when they don't start hitting them, but they're hitting a bunch of other goals. Right. When they don't hit those goals specifically, mm-hmm. they feel like they failed. Right. You know, and it's just not true. There's no such thing as failure. Yeah. Fa- it, I mean, if there is a definition to it is that you, you just stop trying. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Gary V with his business entrepreneurship, <laughs> yep. you know, mm-hmm. fail, you know, Michael Jordan with, you know, and Babe Ruth strikeouts, like everybody, yeah. you know, I was watching a kid play basketball last night while me and my daughter were at the park or whatever. He was there by himself playing basketball. Mm. Right. And I, all I could think of is like, that is the ingredients to be a superstar. Yeah. Like he's showing up, like he could have been, I don't know his story. He could have been cut from the team. Right. He could have been. Just added to the team, like anything, but both scenarios of being added to the team or making varsity or getting cut, if you want to be better, all involved with him going to the court. Right. All of them. Mm -hmm. And so what if you continue to go to court all the time and then you never make it professionally? Right. Well, I would rather, you know, spend my life dedicated to trying to achieve something that Mm -hmm. I really want to do. Right. Right. Uh, Than not going and then never knowing. Right. You know. I would rather spend my life trying to be in recovery, mm-hmm. in my opinion, you know, uh, of, uh, than spend my life just completely drowned out and whatever. Absolutely. It's usually other people's response to that that <laughs> that right. hardens me, mm-hmm. right? Because then, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of like evidence-based practices and stats and stuff. Right. There's no room for grace. Mm-hmm. And I hate stats. I hate them. <laughs> Even though we got, we pump out, we could pump out really good stats. I know we can, and yeah. I know that Rachel and our team is working on them, and they're yeah. coming out really good. Mm-hmm. I don't. I rarely talk about them because I just I hate it. You know, you could narrow the stats down so much to saying, well, if you go, you know, here, as long as you're male, twenty three, have two kids, this will work perfectly for you. We have a hundred percent success rate with that. Right. Right. Oh, but don't come here if you're, you know, <laughs> 19, do, like it just takes, it narrows the scope of the people that, right. that you can be helpful to. So you can either be helpful to the community or fall into that trap where you're only going to work with 24 year old single moms with one kid. That's whatever. Right. right. Fill in the gap. Yeah. Which well, is fine. They, yeah. Those, those places do a good job too. I yeah. just, I don't like saying, mm-hmm. you know, it's really hard for me to say no when our houses are full. Right. That sucks for me. Yep. I hate when someone reaches out to me and they really want to be sober and they want to live in the houses, but I can't because of city code right. or I can't because of, of law or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, and, and if there's anything, if evidence-based practices and stats are awesome, just keep going. You'll find a law that's going to ban you from doing it more. So <laughs> right. it just, we'll it's whatever. There. There's no room for grace with stats and law. Right. For sure. Well, I want to shout out. Uh, so Scott said, just try to be a little bit better today than you were yesterday. So thank you for that. It's good, Scott. And Christy Don Hopkins on our Facebook Live said, there's a reason the rear view mirror is small and the windshield is big. Look and move forward. So just uh, really thank you all so, again so much for just those comments and obviously being here. And Gloria, we're always happy to see you. That's my that's my grandma. So she loves, oh, loves supporting. Grandma. Oh, grandma. um but yeah so it's just it's i think it's one of those things like as we're um, coming towards our last like 10 10 10-ish minutes or so on the show um just looking at as you're planning and future planning you may be in a place you know who knows who knows what you kind of have coming up what you're still trying to focus on what you're trying to put together um but as adam adam eloquency said you know you never know you know, it's, it's not to say that because you don't know what the future is like, oh, you know what? I'm just not going to prepare for anything. I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and just see what happens. There might be some success in that. But at the same time, just putting something down, there's something that can be said for just putting like writing it down. And if it happens, awesome, because then you can look back like, oh, man, I wrote this down on this date and I got to do it this date. 
But there's also something to be said by just always looking and always making sure that you're just staying focused and just going towards something and not putting a timeline to it. I think one of the biggest mm-hmm. things that that Adam shares with our care coordinators and our care and our care team staff that when we're working with participants to have the goal, have the plan, have the thing that you want to achieve, but don't put a time to it. Don't put like, I want to get my kids back by, you know, August 1st. Yes, it's great to have your kids back. Yes, that's a wonderful goal to have. But if it doesn't happen by August 1st and it happens September 1st, does that mean you're a failure because it didn't happen in the time frame that you said it was supposed to happen? No, you got your kids back, right? You had this amazing things happen. So I think the important part of it is to be able to have those goals, have the things you want to shoot for, uh, have the things that you want to be able to talk about. Have the is things Scott you texting want to, you? Yeah. God, what, Scott, <laughs> God, how can you like not, yeah. he's got everything, he'll, he'll be watching a TV show and he's going to call in, right? But Dr. Phil, you're wrong. I got a dad joke. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> Scott, Scott said, ask Adam oh what gosh. time he got up this morning. And Adam said six and said, Scott says. You know, says, the only people who say that are the people who have less sobriety. <laughs> so I have a half hour more sobriety than you. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> That's not how it works. It's like you just it's like you're drunk while you're sleeping or something. Like, uh yeah. So just Scott's have, one of those guys that yeah. would be like, it's about quality, not quantity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the quality of the goal, not the quantity yeah. of the goal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's trying to get on this podcast. Yeah, he already texted me. He's like, it was like How do you get me on there? Can, I need Can you get me I connected? Need. I have a lot of great input. I know, Scott. We will get you on the show officially, we Scott. Will. We will. Next week you can just come on to the show. We got five microphones in here mm-hmm. yeah we can get you on the show next week scott don't go out of town don't make any excuses <laughs> yeah i knew you would like he'll that be a, he'll, he, he'll huh he said i knew you'd like that no one likes it <laughs> i think people just want to view me and scott banter <laughs> to one another like, uh, yep. like, that's Scott's why they want to call it scotty's corner mm-hmm. nobody nobody really <laughs> likes that name Scott likes that name. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what I call him? Because his last name's, you know, because, uh, you know, they do the last initial. They'll be mm-hmm. like Scott C or whatever. I call him Scotch. <laughs> That's terrible. I know. It's super <laughs> terrible. <laughs> like, what's up, Scotch? What's up? They're like, why are you calling him Scott? Like, well, it's because Scott C. Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you knew the recovery? My bad. Yeah. 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 Scott, oh, there he goes. Yep, Scotty's corner. Still trying to plug it. Nope. Yeah. Well, I guess if you heard it here first. You know maybe. what we should do is we should let him have that name and do a podcast or whatever, and then we should we should use the Ralph's Corner logo. Logo. And put it. Scotty's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can have Scott do a takeover. We yeah. Can, we'll let him take the we'll let him take the reins for a day. Yeah. Watch him like market the crap out of it and just be like <laughs> just blows up. He'll just be I'll give you five dollars if you listen. <laughs> And then it just blows up, and they're like, see, you should have me on the show. But we don't see all the back-end work where he hired some <laughs> some call center in India <laughs> to do marketing for him, and it marketed to, like, a million people. And uh, At least, I mean, to your credit, Scott, that would be, that would be significant. You know, cause Scott always, you know, he loves his technology. He always just calls me up, like, hey, I need some help. I'm like, I got you. But maybe he might. Maybe maybe all this time he's just been playing and pretending. Yeah, that he's not as technologically advanced as he actually is. Who knows? Who, Who knows, knows what the future holds? Yeah, <laughs> doesn't even know when he's on the internet half the time. He probably <laughs> thinks that that this is like virtual reality. What he's watching. <laughs> he's like, why doesn't this headset work? Uh, Scott said it's called being creative. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, with the last few minutes, we uh. Any closing remarks and things you want to share and plug or talk or just anything? Uh, Any future events that we can we can plug really quick? It's a good question. I, I mean, remember. I know the op ball is in I think November. November. Right. Um, I think oh we're doing I there's like a, a barbecue we're doing I don't know I mm-hmm. don't have it in front of me I should have asked Jeff before I came up here but. Yep. Um, just stay tuned, you know, get signed up for newsletters, subscribe to our channels, mm-hmm. uh, get connected. If you need treatment, just show up, yep. right? We'll help you, you know, if you get help with us or we got to get you somewhere else. Like the goal of our staff is to make sure you get help. Mm-hmm. So everybody is in a position, in a better position when they leave than when they come there, even if it just means you got a bike. 
right. you know what I mean? Yep. So, um, so I appreciate all the staff. I appreciate our communities that we're in. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be opening up uh, uh, some awesome opportunities here in, in the coming uh, months or whatever with housing, with new programs and, and uh, all that stuff. So just uh, stay tuned. And then I guess for today, um, just, just stay willing no mm-hmm. matter what happens. Whether you hit your goals, you don't hit them. Whether you're sober or you're not, just stay willing. That's the only goal that you that you should 100% try to complete with a a success rate. So. Well, um, one event I wanted to plug. Uh, the, there's a golf tourney doing another one uh, on Monday, September 18th, Moorhead Country Club. Uh, as you can imagine, Scott College definitely told me to plug that. So. As he is my boss, I will make sure I say that. Uh, so please, if you're interested in playing golf. Did he comment the golf tournament? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> but uh, if you don't, if you are on uh, listening to us on the radio and you do have Internet access and a Facebook account, please, please like our page on Facebook. Uh, definitely check us out. You can just uh, search F5 Project Org is uh, kind of the username. Definitely be able to find us. We post on there all the time about uh, upcoming events that we have, um, different recovery uh, opportunities. There's just a lot of just happening in our community and that are happening outside in North Dakota. So please follow us there if you haven't already. Uh, Follow my page, One Pretty Ricky. You can find me on there as well. Um, We're just doing a really, really a lot of awesome things here with this radio show. And and who knows what we have a lot more coming. We have some more guests that are going to be coming. um, We're going to get Jesse back here soon. Um, I have another guest that's going to be joining us in July who's out of Milwaukee. He's going to be talking about some um, amazing things. And uh, Scott's going to be getting on the show. So that'll be really For two cool. minutes. <laughs> we'll give Scott two minutes. <laughs> yep. He can tell one dad. He can come on every single show mm-hmm. at the top of the hour, do a dad joke, and he has to leave. Okay. <laughs> put up with his shenanigans. <laughs> well, there you go. F5 Radio. So thank you all again so much. Thank you, Adam, for yeah. being able get to Get signed up. Happen. Subscribe to this channel. Get a free T-shirt. Yes please uh, so this one pretty ricky adam martin thank you all again have an amazing amazing day in recovery have a good day